In this video we're going to jump from Raspberry Pi robots to 80 mega robots, so it's gonna be fun. Hey everyone, my last Sun Founder post was about this. That was a Raspberry Pi robotic platform with four wheels. And well, if you're into Raspberry Pi, that is the video for you. But today we're going to talk about the other side, which is Arduino-alike platforms, robotic platforms that you can actually use to learn to code and interact with different components. And Sun Founder has got you covered with their new 3-in-1 kit that will teach you how to make robotic platforms like this, or how to use sensors and different modules and turn your devices into IoT devices. On top of that, the entire kit comes with lots of different accessories, lessons for beginners, and even a section about making games in Scratch. Since there is a lot. As we've got a lot to unpack, well, let's start with, well, unpacking. Apart from the acrylic template, everything is inside the box, which looks very familiar to me. Why? Because it's very similar set of sensors, modules, and everything that I could interact with through Arduino-like boards. Uh, that was the very first thing that I bought when I was learning about electronics. I was misguided by then and the box came with no instructions, so straight out of the box it's already a much better experience because uh, this kit comes with really well-written instructions and documentation. Apart from the bits that are included to make your Arduino run around in a two-wheeled or three-wheeled robot, there's a lot of different modules that you will be able to use on a breadboard and learn how they work and how to interface and interact with them. And to be honest, these are the most popular sensors and components that you can find in many like kits, so you're definitely not missing out. And the list contains obviously apart from the 80 mega based R3 board from Sunfounder, which is a copy of Arduino, you'll also find like sensors like your ultrasonic module, obstacle avoidance module, joysticks, uh, the soil moisture, relays, and plenty of others, including servos and motors. And while the Raspberry Pi kit was a little bit more polished, this 3-in-1 kit takes a little bit different approach. And even though the kit is named 3-in-1, it's actually split into four different parts. Now, the first part is obviously learning, and here comes a surprise. The documentation is actually quite complete, including a lot of information on how to use Arduino-like devices, how to interface with GPIOs, and everything. So if you are totally new to this, you'll get pretty much everything you need to get started, which is much appreciated. After that, you are encouraged to jump into a learning part in which you're going to take individual components and learn how to use them in action. There's a breadboard provided and quickly you'll be making your own circuits and writing a code to read the information or inputs. Each paragraph contains complete instructions including snippets of the codes, screenshots of the circuits that you have to make and explanation for what each part of the code does. So it's really well explained even if you're just getting started. Once you're familiar with all of this, you can get to the next level, which is actually assembling the car and programming it. You'll notice that the actual car doesn't really have a car alike components. I mean, there are wheels and everything, but it uses the breadboard and simple standoffs to a kind of keep all the elements in place, which means exactly the same principles that you've been using in a learning part of that kit will be deployed to actually construct your car uh, connect everything and program it. Now the car, there is a list of separate tutorials, there is a list of different variations that you can actually deploy and assemble the car in different ways, from automatic obstacle deployment to controlling the car over Wi-Fi. If I can give you one advice about this section would be pay attention to the assembly because when I started to assemble my robot I quickly, well it wasn't quickly, I've discovered after some time that I've placed all the elements on the wrong side of the acrylic board and I have to disassemble everything, flip the board and start from the beginning. It was a face pal moment but at least it's working now. By this stage you notice that there is an ASP8266 in the box as well, 
that let you control the car via Wi-Fi, but it's also part of the next section, which is um, about IoT projects. The included ESP8266-01 is uh, one of those mini modules that comes with all the necessary pins to actually interact with a thing or two or allow a serial connection to your Arduino-like board. And that's basically a principle of operation of all the projects of IoT. So I've decided to give it a go and from entire list I've picked... Yeah, of course I've picked monitoring of the household environment because Hey, it's an automation channel after all, right? So after quick breadboarding and flashing the firmware and setting everything up, I give it a go with Blink. It was, to be honest, first time I've used Blink and it was surprisingly easy to set up channels, stream the data and display it on the dashboard. So that section will teach you how to use Arduino and ESP-based board to work together and communicate with Wi-Fi. And yes, I am aware that you could simply take ESP8266 board, especially one that have a little bit more pins exposed, and use it as a microcontroller to connect to your modules, but that's another story. The last section of the tutorial is about Scratch and Pictoblocks, which is the ID used to interface with the Scratch-like uh, programming. This will allow you to use visual programming to create your projects and go through several tutorials that kind of focusing on games. So if you follow this project, they contain the element of hardware and software integration. It's a very rewarding way of working because whatever changes you're going to do to your hardware will affect what you see on the screen and how your game performs. It's definitely recommended to your offspring if they have interest in making games in the future. Priced at $69.99 in US dollars, the SoundFounder 3-in-1 kit has enough to actually keep you interested for the weeks to come. And even if you're going to go through every project out there, you can simply disassemble the car and use the components for your other projects because, well, as far as the kit is concerned, everything can be used on a separate basis. So if you are interested, I'm going to include the links in the description of this video. So big thanks to SunFounder for sending me the kit for the review. And if you're interested and want to learn more, links to the article is going to be included in the description of this video. As for now, guys, you know I do not have a posting schedule. You know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain all of this. I trust you know how to use the tools. But follow me on social media listed down below and start a conversation. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.